Morning, folks. So it's a beautiful day here in northeast Scotland at Tappanoff Farm, and um, just done our chores, had our breakfast. Now we're going to start our day, and today we're going to be working in and around both the market garden and the hen run to make sure that the vegetables that we're growing here in the market garden have got plenty of healthy, fertile soil. We need to add compost uh, regularly to our beds. Our system here is that we take all of that organic matter that we generate on the farm and we take it to the hen run. And then periodically we go in there with the trailer or wheelbarrows and we dig it out and we pile it up. That injection of oxygen really makes it break down into compost very quickly and we end up with a lovely heap of fertile compost. So today we're gonna go into the chicken straw yard and start harvesting some of that compost material. But to do that we need to move these worm farms which are behind me here because we've realized we need quite a large area to build this compost pile. It needs to sit for a bit before we use it out of the chicken run. So we're going to move the worm farms. We wanted to do that anyway. We want to move them closer to the chickens um, because we're thinking that we can feed the worms to the hens for a protein food source. We're going to have to empty them out because we want to keep the worms and the, the compost that's built up in these worm farms. We'll take the tractor in to the chicken run, dig out all the lovely deep layers of composting animal manures and we'll pile it up here, cover it with a tarp and in a month or so when we need to add it to the beds before we transplant, we should have some lovely compost. <laughs> The way that we mostly make compost is with a slow start. Any organic materials we accumulate around the farm, such as animal manures, uh, vegetable waste, hedge trimmings, grass clippings, we bring it all here into the straw yard, the hen run. That allows the chickens to have a scratch through it. They eat anything that they might find that's tasty to them. And what they don't eat, they leave and it composts here in situ in the straw yard periodically we come in and harvest that compost. The entire chicken run or straw yard as we call it, we think of as a compost area. Um, the material I'm standing on right now works as a great mulch with the straw and wood chip and we can take buckets of that and put it around fruit trees. Whereas this area behind me that we've bordered with these logs is more where we dump the bedding from the goats and the bedding from the chicken house itself. And it's here that we're going to be digging out today. Now these are all 
worm farms um, and we just uncovered it, just checking on them and um, before we moved them. They're looking very healthy, there's plenty of worms in them, which is a good thing. So this is the layer of straw that we put on top as a kind of insulation and protection from the elements for the worms. And underneath we've just been adding our food scraps, kitchen waste on top, and the worms take it down and turn it into soil. We have a, a small bucket at the plug hole. There's a layer of gravel on the bottom, and so any liquid that's produced drains through the gravel and out of the plug hole and goes into this bucket and we call that worm juice. We use it as a fertilizer, a plant food, and, and that can be diluted quite a lot. You can just water your plants with it. And they're actually called tiger worms. We can order these online and we, we got two kilos of them, which turned out to be quite a large amount, but they seem to have balanced themselves out. And they're specifically the type of worm to feed on decaying organic matter. So this is really a great small scale composting system. You could use this in a back garden as well. Um, we have kind of slightly larger scale ones um, for our scale of market garden, but it's, it's, it's a really great way to use your kitchen waste to create compost, just as our, our chickens are a way of creating compost as well. So now it's on to emptying these out and moving the worm farms. The way that we've designed these worm farm bathtubs, like Rosa was saying, we've got some gravel in the bottom of each bath as drainage. But we've put a piece of landscape fabric on top of that gravel so that when we're doing like we are just now, which is digging out the worm casts, we don't end up getting a shovel full of gravel as well. So we're gonna just keep this vermicompost in the wheelbarrows just now. We'll probably take a couple of shovels worth and inoculate our um, compost heap that we're gonna be making today with this. Um, we'll pour some of the worm juice on that compost heap um, to hydrate it as well. But we'll probably put a lot of this back in the worm farms and add some new fresh manure for the worms to eat and some food scraps uh, just to sort of reboost the worm population again in the baths after we've moved them. All right, that's us moved the worm farms relatively successfully. Quite heavy work. And, uh, sorry love, when you go. <laughs> and we've put a little bit of the um, worm farm soil mixture, including obviously the tiger worms, back in the baths. And we'll put some fresh uh, material in there for the worms to start eating. And the rest we're gonna keep in these wheelbarrows and we're gonna add to the compost heap that we make uh, with whatever we take out of the chicken run. And this will also inoculate that and give it a population of worms, although of course there'll be worms in it already, but we'll add a few more. And that should give it a good kickstart in life. So has got the trailer out on the BCS and Rose is just going to lure the chickens out of the straw yard with something tasty and into the field over there so that um, we can go in with the trailer and work getting the compost out without being bothered by the hens.
quite a few loads of compost uh, that's gone from here in the chicken straw yard up to our new compost area in the market garden. This top layer is quite anaerobic. Um, I think we've added a bit too much chicken manure without mixing enough carbonous material like straw in. But underneath, it's starting to look really good. But what's taking us a while is that there's so much of it. It's gonna be a bit of a longer job than we maybe first thought. So we're gonna just do a couple more loads today and that's us calling it a day, I'd say. But it was a beautiful day and great to have all this fertility available to us to use for growing our crops in the garden. Thanks for watching and uh, as always, if you like what you saw, please hit subscribe, uh, like the video and leave a comment for us. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.